everybody? It's your boy K Ray 06 here on K Ray TV, and we are here for another All American episode preview. This is about to be the Feel the Pain Episode 9 trailer breakdown. The episode is titled Trust, and ha, <laughs> boy, CW dropped one on us. You can trust and believe that you know I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say. But before we get into that, you already know what to do. If you like this video, then go ahead and run a thumbs up on the video as it helps. YouTube sees it as uh, interaction. They push the video forward. I see it and I appreciate it greatly. Bottom of my heart. All right. If you're not a part of the Dream Squad, that is the best squad on the net as we are on our way to that 5K, less than 100 away. And you want to join this family? Then uh, go ahead and show some love by hitting that sub, click the noti bell, hit all, and share like you care, all right? And uh, without further ado, I don't want to hold y'all because I got a lot to say. Anyway, I don't want to hold y'all, so we're going to get right into this, all right? Rotate. Put these on so I can see better. <laughs> yeah. Last night, you drove us drunk. Everything okay here? And you asked me to put my life on the line with the cops. Oh, snap. If you don't come clean to your parents, I will. Ooh. We lose one more game, no playoffs. Yeah, y'all have been stinking it up. I haven't delivered on my promise. Mm. Oh, that's that new kicker. I've been hitting a lot of offers to work with some legit producers, and school keeps getting in the way. We actually gonna see some music. Making this big decision because you're hurting. Somebody talk to her. And the whole time you just waiting to make your move. Is everything okay, guys? Actually, Ben's been drinking since the summer. Oh, dang! And you covered for her. My car's gone. Olivia's missing. She was in trouble and I didn't see it. She could be anywhere right now. The only choice is to save her life. Right now, I don't care about football. Yo! I feel like this is all my fault. You carry an unbearable weight of responsibility. Okay, I Spencer. You to equate love with sacrifice. But I need you to start putting yourself first. Come through, Mama Grace. I don't want to leave things unsaid. Oh. What's going on? We never know when we'll get a chance to see. Bruh. Oh, okay. Alright. <laughs> Y'all already knowing. Y'all already know me. <laughs> Last uh, video I did was episode nine uh, preview. It was like literally seven seconds. They came through strong on this one. This was about a minute and 30. I know it got the extra 10 seconds, but that's just flub. That's, you mean we cut away that fat. But they came through with the Feel the Pain trailer, y'all. They came through with this one. So y'all already know what we're going to do. I'm going to roll up these sleeves because we about to get to work. We about to get busy. About to get these hands dirty. Cause I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say based off what we've seen so far. So let's go ahead and roll this thing back. Y'all know how we do it on the channel. We're gonna roll it back and then we're gonna give our thoughts on each little section. So let's go ahead and go back to the beginning. Let's go. Last night you drove us drunk. Everything okay here? And you asked me to put my life on the line with the cops. Boom. All right. So let me take one of these out. I can still see good. Um. So this instance, on uh, uh, the last video I said, who do you think the uh, fault falls into, or the fault lies in, is Spencer or Olivia when it comes to the crash? Some of you said, like I said, <laughs> yo, that uh, Olivia got to take that L. And then some of you even said, you know, Spencer shouldn't have been touching on her. You know how she be acting. But I'm like, yo, she could have pulled over in the middle of the street. She could have drove him all the way home before having that conversation. Like, nah. Your girl got to take the L. That's my boo, and I'm saying she got to take the L on that one. And uh, I say that because I said she brought up something interesting in that episode when she was getting in Layla's neck. When she was sending her to the shadow realm, to that sunken place, she said, you, uh, you got Spencer drunk, and it could have ruined his football career. Oh, I got to take this out so y'all feel me. You got Spencer drunk, and you could have ruined his football career. Mira, Mira, live, baby girl, come here, come here, sit down with us, sit down with us. Mamas, you <laughs> was drinking. Yes, we know she was not drunk. We know that. 
but she was drinking and driving. And you know Liv ain't good with the with the feelings. You know she liked to, <coughs> you know how like on Get Out <laughs> when the home dude was running, he just hitting that, <coughs> then he hit that sharp turn, but ow, like that's what Liv like doing. She like to get out and run. So she not the type to be like, let me express all these feelings and give you an Oscar winning performance, aka Spencer's confession. Like she, she ain't doing all that. So if you knew you need some breathing and you need some time, why are you talking to him in the car? Why are you talking to him in the car? You could have literally ruined Spencer's career. You got you start drinking, drove, and you crash. What if Spencer would have got injured? What if you would have got injured? And then you ask him to switch seats. I don't care for the people out there talking about, you know, he, he needs to have her his have her back. That's her baby and all this other stuff. Y'all gotta understand what the setting is this is in crenshaw this ain't in beverly's she taking spencer home she ain't going home and i get it that i did say you know laura's probably going to get her off or get them both off because she's the da but what if something happens before laura get there as we see it did not happen but it could have happened for spencer to even say you put my life in danger you put my life at risk for even being in that situation. You're a black man, you're in Crenshaw, and you're at a crash. <laughs> and you crashed your vehicle late at night. That's the setting for a setup. You know what I'm saying? Like the officer could come over there, he could have injured Spencer's arm worse, he could have shot him, he could have took him to jail, anything. And you know that principle. Let's say Spencer went to jail. This for a night, sat in there, got released, blah, blah, blah. That news is going to hit our soap opera villain principal, and he is not going to care. He looking for anything to dismantle that team just so he can get back at Billy, who I think didn't even hit him in his head and swell him and knot him all up. Like, I didn't, <laughs> he looking for anything. So, Liv didn't take anything. I know she probably was thinking I ain't going to crash or anything, but she didn't think at all as far as the consequences. Yes, I gave her a just due for going to see Spencer, for telling her feelings, even though I said that was a bland, unseasoned, <laughs> unseasoned meat of a confession. But she got the nerve to try to do it, but she should have did it under different settings. And it looked like they actually got out and went into the house to talk because this uh, looks like Spencer's home right here. Bam. So we know they crashed. We know they eventually got to the house. I don't know how. And then they had this conversation. This is probably where Spencer asked him or asked Liv, like, to give. If he didn't ask her at the scene, then he asked her here. He probably asked her at the scene because when he looked at her, when she said she wasn't going to pass the sobriety test, and he looked at her like, that was that look like, oh, my goodness, what the hell? Like, because he didn't know. And, you know, Spencer is good at knowing this stuff, and he didn't even know. Um, that's probably because love got in the way, too. But still, he didn't know even before he confessed. Uh, at least that's what we're led to believe. Cause if he knew, then that's just ignorant. So I ain't, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna even, I ain't gonna even throw that thought in the air. But if they didn't have that conversation at the scene, then they're gonna have it here at the house. And Spencer is gonna get in her neck a little bit. Show her a little tough love. Show her a little tough love because baby girl, she needs someone needs to do it. Cause no one else is looking out for her. Spencer's always been the one looking out for her. So I know that scene gonna be intense. It seemed like boy it be going down at the at the <laughs> at the James house. That's the same spot Layla was standing in. Boy, hold on, let's keep going. The cops. If you don't come clean your parents, I will. So yeah, that's probably in that same scene where he letting her know, yo, if you don't come clean your parents, I will. And if y'all don't know Spencer's history, that boy do not be playing when it comes to ultimatums. Remember, he gave his own father ultimatum, either him or uh, Darnell. Me and Naomi Beauty Mind go back, <laughs> go back and forth on this a lot because even though she understands my perspective and I understand her perspective, we still, we still be going at it because <laughs> I'm like, bro, this man gave Darnell, I mean, gave Corey an ultimatum, either him or Darnell. Like, you know that was selfish, and if Coop didn't get in his neck. He would have took a long time to come to that conclusion and Darnell would have been way back somewhere yonder by himself because Spencer over there with his little ignorant issues. Granted, 
Uh, we know he got daddy issues and banned him and how Darnell was sprung up on him, uh, warned him to act, to act a little ignorant, but still, y'all, y'all get my point. And then when he found out about the affair, he went to Billy and got in his neck talking about if he don't tell Laura and them, he will. And now live. He like, yo, if you don't tell your parents, I will. So Spencer James do not be playing with the all tomatoes. <laughs> that man say, yo. You're not gonna do this to me. Like I will go snitch. Let's continue. We lose one more game, no playoffs. I'm having a bad season. Uh uh, hold on, we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back, nah. I see Chris still got them dang. Set it all Cleo braids. I know y'all see him. I know y'all see him. If y'all don't fix that man head, I'm gonna come from everybody at the CW staff. Stop letting this man show up like that. Stop. Bro, I'm sorry. I had to pause him, but I seen you see it. That's the Cleo braids. Remember when Cleo was on the dang car and set it off and she had the wife beat her on with the gun. She dan and her girl was dancing and all that. That's them same braids. Bro, they need to stop. I'm having a bad season. Ooh, let's pause it right there. Hold on. Right here, look at this. Chargers collapse, and then you see uh probably say of their resource. <laughs> Spencer is just getting a hit from all sides this season. Like, I know he was angry and uh <laughs> angry and mad in, in, in the first two seasons because of his daddy, but this is a whole different, this is a whole different beast. How he just getting he getting stretched apart. Like this man is gonna collapse just from pure uh pure stress. He's carrying too much weight. He's trying to save every single person and not try to save himself. And he's gonna fumble. He's gonna crumble under that pressure. Look at this. Look at this. Who reading that? Is that Grace or somebody? Somebody reading this? Like, dang, she probably gonna go in there and have that conversation with him. Probably right here. Yeah. So that was Grace. So Spencer is feeling it. I don't know if this is before he outs live. I think it's before he outs live, but he's feeling the pressure of he ain't delivering his promises. The teams are barely winning. Remember, uh, uh, Dylan was like, yo, they barely winning games. Barely. They still don't got a kicker. And uh, he, he came back as a supposed savior that was going to save Crenshaw. And his shoulder is still jacked up because he's mentally got stuck points. So I think Liv is one of his biggest stuck points. I don't think it's just a Coop situation. I think Liv is the, <laughs> is the big stuck point. But, uh, yeah, Spencer is feeling it right here. And I, I agree with him. Like, Spencer doesn't have any outlets. Liv, he's worried about Liv now. So she's not going to be his outlet. Layla and him, quote-unquote, beefing, so he ain't got that outlet. Coop being ignorant in the streets, so he ain't got that outlet. All he got is his mama. That's all he got, but he needs his Coops. He need his Olivia. He ain't got no male friends to be like, yo. So this man struggling. I promise. Boom, so we gonna get a... Uh, I want to get it. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to go ahead and give a shout out to the Chocolate Sister. The Chocolate Sister. CW, I'll see y'all. I'll see y'all with a diverse cast trying to get the Chocolate Sisters up in there. Go ahead. Go ahead. So here, here, uh, my fellow peoples, this is the new kicker. This is the new kicker. Uh, shout out once again to Naomi uh, Beauty Mod. She actually hit me up with the info. And she was like, yo, they're getting a new person. This is going to be a kicker and she's going to be a female. So I was like, thank you for the info. Y'all really be coming through, though. Y'all really be coming through. Y'all were like, you hopped in my comments and you were like, yo, they just dropped a uh, trailer for episode nine. Go react to it. And I seen it. And I'm like, they are send me the link. And you bow, bow, came through with the link. So I appreciate every one of y'all that be hitting me up. I, I be seeing them. I still got to go through all my comments and stuff because I took like two weeks or almost three weeks off. So I still got to go through all my comments and reply back to y'all. So don't worry, I reply. Uh, but yeah, thank y'all for sending me the information and alerting me to uh, the videos. 
and uh, all the new news that drop. I appreciate y'all. But here is the new kicker. This is going to solve it. You know Billy. Billy do not be playing when it comes to recruiting. Remember, he recruited Spencer to turn Beverly around. He was like, yo, after I seen the boy play, pfft, -ch -ch I'm going to the playoffs. And now he going to see her and be like, yeah. So this might be the, uh, the person that's going to actually start uh, widening that gap on their wins because they can't lose a single game. You know how much more pressure that is? <laughs> Spencer come back, he beat up, he broke down, his confidence ain't there, and then you tell me I can't even lose one game? Sheesh. So, yeah, I think this, uh, I think she's going to be a great ad. And I want to see the dynamics of having a woman kicker, <clears throat> a female kicker on the team. Like, I hope they don't do the whole stereotype. She looks more like she's going to probably be, um, more tomboyish in her demeanor. I'm not saying like she'll be a tomboy. Like maybe she still like dudes or whatnot. But I think she's going to be a little rougher, what I mean, because she plays football and whatnot. So I hope they don't do the whole stereotypical thing. Oh, you're a woman. You can't do that. Like I ain't trying to hear all that. I ain't trying to hear all that. So hopefully they don't, don't go that stupid route. She might just be the key that saves my team. Well, you know, Boy, Billy, when he see, when he doing that look, well, you know he found something good. That saves my team. To work with some legit producers and school keeps getting in the way i hope you are not making this big decision because you're hurting okay so let's let's go talk about coop let's talk about coop yo i just i want to get the face there we go coop you killing me with them beanies too man <laughs> i know y'all seen that mean they be saying that coop be doing the same face all the time and they <laughs> put her on a squidward meme <laughs> Ah, oh, them beanies is not helping. Breezy, them beanies not helping. <laughs> They're not helping. But okay, all right, my bad. So, <laughs> so, we finally get somebody talking to Coop. I've been saying for the longest, where is your parents at? Where is your parents at? I know your mama was uh, on the show Snowfall, but she got she got took out a long time ago. Bring her back on the set. Where your daddy? Somebody needs to talk some sense into her. Uh, I got sent the the synopsis for this, and it did say that her mom was gonna talk to her. So I'm hoping she is back in this episode, unless they <laughs> unless they just say, "Yo, you know what? Grace is your mama now." All right, so she the only one talking to her. Grace has been the only one getting the coop neck. When Coop tried to bring that box over to the house to get a Spencer, and um, and she was like, uh-uh, like, you ain't leaving that box here. Like, she the only one talking to her, and here now, she talking to her again, saying, I hope you're not basing this decision uh, because you're hurting. Like, we know Coop is. It might, it's probably a 90-10. 10% 10 she probably like, yo, I can probably really make it with this. But 90% of that is because she hurt. Patient is on tour, and uh, her and Spencer are on the rocks. And that's not to say it's Spencer's fault either, because originally I got mad at Spencer because he tried to place all the blame on Coop. But when Coop, after they had their little interaction and whatnot, and Coop said what she had to say, uh, I still was a little mad at Spencer on the point of, on the point of where he said it's like peace in that, and that pissed me off. But when he got up and did his King speech, he bid Coop up. And Coop is the one that came down saying she cutting off any everybody that anything and everybody that's holding her back while looking at Spencer. Like, I would have let her walk out too. Like, bro, I ain't got no beef for her. I'm trying to do a little olive branch, <clears throat> and you looking at me like I'm the ox and walk out. So I wouldn't have chased her, but I'm glad somebody because she needs to be man. She needs to be put in the headlock. Like somebody needs to just snatch that beanie off her head. Just, <clears throat> Like, just snatch it off, because she be getting on my nerves. I do want to see uh, more music from Coop, because we always get, like, a little, a little, yeah, we always get, like, a little sprinkle of music, but um, I don't want to see her, like, quit high school. Like, just finish your high school year, then go do what you need to do. Stop being so ignorant. So I'm glad that Grace is the one talking to her, because I don't even know if Layla knows yet. So I feel like Layla would be like, nah, you need to get in school. I feel like Layla will say that. That saves my team. I've been getting a lot of offers to work with some legit producers, and school keeps getting in the way. I hope you are not making this big decision because you're hurting. You want 
Yeah, so uh, I'm glad Grace is there. Grace is, I told you, Grace MVP. She is not playing. She is handing out advice <laughs> every episode. Like, here you go, here you go, here you go. I wonder if they go into college season, like, how will she be implemented? Because college is usually away from the home pretty much. And uh, it, you won't really have too much time for the parents to be on scene if you're more on campus. So I wonder uh, what they're going to do with that. But that's down the line. That's down the line. Let's talk about Asher. Mr. I, Mr. Can't Get Right. <sighs> Remember I told y'all, I told y'all specifically that they were going to do this stupid love triangle with Vanessa Asher and JJ. I, and I don't want to see it. I didn't want to see it. I said, bro, no, nah, like, <laughs> no. Nah. So here we go. Here we go. Asher over here about to steal a kiss. Check this out. And she didn't back up. And JJ now mad. So let's go back because I want to still frame this dumb thing because Right there, bow. Let's get this stupid look in the frame. And I got to talk to y'all for a while. Let me take this out. So Asher in the last episode, when Vanessa brought him that bit off Pondo saying she wants to go to a movie with him and all this junk talking under the umbrella of being friends. Um, <laughs> He left her high and dry. Then told her mama about whatever relationship they got going on. And then she come up in front of them talking about uh, she wants to be with his friends and, you know, uh, basically saying that she know her worth because <laughs> he getting over live and she ain't like no rebound type of girl. Like, first of all, but that's how you going to even like getting your neck just yet because uh, you was lying. You was lying. You came in here trying to get with Asher. You called him late at night, booty call hours, telling him about his girlfriend. You didn't did all this extra stuff. Going with a friend group just to be around the brother. Like, that ain't your friends? What you around them for? If you want to go with Asher, go with Asher. Get some Pondo, say run in the dang run in the mornings, whatever y'all do. Like, go do that off screen. But you ain't got to keep intersecting yourself in the group. You kept doing that to be around him. So I am confused why you start entertaining JJ. JJ, we're going to hashtag that JJ did nothing wrong. JJ has never done anything wrong. That man like the party. I do want to see him get a more uh, prominent role than the dumb jock. Uh, <clears throat> so I do like him getting angry right here because he didn't even get angry with Jordan when they were doing the QB stuff. And he, he looked he look pissed right here. I hope I hope he hem him up. Please, CW, let him hem him up. Just grab him right here. Just, nah, 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 just give him a shake. To shake his soul free. Just, nah, nah, nah. Just, <laughs> just do it to it. Because I hate that stupid face. That's that I can't get right face. That's that Asher I can't get right face. And it's been constant for three seasons. This dude act like he just wanted to be friends. Seeing that Vanessa was starting to, you know, entertain JJ. And the first chance he get, swoop in. Now, for the people who love Asher, I don't know why. For the people who love Asher, make this make sense for me. Hop in the comments and let me know. Because I know people that still like, you know what, but he, he troubled. And <laughs> everybody got some troubles. This man been doing dumb stuff from the very start. From the very start. He slut-shamed Liv. I get it. He was upset, but you didn't have to slut-shame the person that was trying to help you out. And then even after that got you on your feet and got your daddy on your feet. <sighs> he outed Jordan at the, ca at the camping thing. It was supposed to be about <laughs> Spencer, but you out there dropping bombs because you mad because Liv got in your non-girlfriend's <laughs> neck. And you've been emotionally cheating. On live when y'all was together or whatever y'all was. You had a whole relationship in Mexico and then come back acting like she did something wrong <laughs> because she talking to Spencer. Like, boy, cut it out. And all the while, he been having that same stupid, dumb Asher face that pisses me off. See, I didn't like him in Teen Wolf. And when I seen him in here, I was like, bro, not him again. Because he always played these ignorant characters. I can't stand him. I can't. You. Now, the real person, I give you kudos. I give you kudos on your acting because you pisses me off. You piss me off to the point where I want to, you know, just give you a mortal cop. Just, whoopsie. Just knock, just knock you through some, some uh, barriers into a different location in real life. 
So that means you're doing a good job and you getting me upset. But ah, I do not like this because JJ ain't did nothing wrong. And this man took the first opportunity. Look at this. The first opportunity to get him a kiss. And this ain't one-sided. Yeah, I said I was going to hold off. Vanessa, too. Vanessa, too. She didn't back up. You want to be with Vanessa now? Did she back up? Did y'all see some back up? Nah. <laughs> nah, she did not. So Vanessa part of the blame too because you stringing people along. Why keep going on these dates with JJ if you ain't going to make it clear that nah, we just friends. I hang out with you, but it ain't like that. You over there <laughs> doing all that. Man, I hope JJ hem him up with the naked chest out. That boy stay in stripper mode with a shirt off. <laughs> But I really do hope he hem him up, for real, though. The whole time, you were just waiting to make your move. Is everything okay, guys? Actually, Liz's been drinking since the summer. Bruh! Serious, sisters. And you covered for her. All right, let, that's in that little small second. Let's go run it back. Let's go run it back. So check out this. <laughs> you can tell a lot. You can tell a lot by body language, all right? You see Jordan chilling. You see them eating at the baker's house and whatnot. And look at Spencer. The man is like this. You see this all right here? All this right here? See them shoulder little? Uh -uh. That means he tied up in the chest. <laughs> a lot of discomfort. He impatient. He want to do something. And you can tell. You can tell just from that alone. He ain't, he ain't there for no entertainment. He ain't there for no good food. He ain't there for no conversations. He only want one thing to happen, and that's for Liv to confess that she's been drinking. And look at it. Okay, guys. I love that Laura is the one that be that be peeping things. That be peeping things. Look, Spencer's still like, mm, mm -mm. I don't know if she's looking at Jordan too, but uh, Spencer is like, Shh, man. <laughs> He probably gonna look at Liv after this. If I was him and I'm doing this, and she said, it's okay, I'm looking at Liv. You better tell her. You better tell her. All right. All right. I did not expect this, to be honest. I didn't think uh, this is the way it was gonna come out. This man is at the dinner table. I'm talking about you. Just, <laughs> just saying so nonchalantly. Just, yeah, so check this out. Liv been all uh, drinking up. <laughs> just hold some of it though. Hmm, what you put in this? Paprika? Like, 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 he did it so nonchalantly, like, Spencer, Spencer, dang, check this out. Look, you see that look? Boom. I guarantee it. Like I said, I guarantee he looked at her. She looked at him. He In his eyes, he said, you better, he said, you better tell or I'm going to have to say it for you. And she looking like trying to give him that, you know, that little deer in the head, like her beautiful big eyes, but you ain't going to distract me. And she, <laughs> she giving him like, no, it's not the right time. And he like, it's going to never be the right time. So let's go ahead and drop. You dropped the bomb on me, baby. You dropped the bomb on me. Like, that's what he did. Man's been drinking since the summer. You know how serious this is. And, and you can tell, like, go back before we get on Billy old bust us up. Look how he looking. This is tearing him up inside. It is tearing him up inside because he cared that much for Liv. Remember, when Liv was going through her little stuff and she was starting to feel like the uh, urge to do something, she found that pill bottle. When she told Spencer that she found that pill bottle, that man immediately said, like, yo, did you call, you call your sponsor? Like, he was in Operation Save mode. So him hearing this and he didn't know anything about it, that entire summer, he's been around her. Been saying, nah, we ain't drinking tonight. Doing all this stuff to keep her good. And he didn't know she was already doing it. This is killing him. Because all he want to do is save his boo. Really my boo, but he want to save his boo. So this hurts. Because it's the summer. You know how serious this is. And you covered for her. My car's now, now, I want to freeze frame it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I need you all up in the frame, sir. Nope, nope, go back. Need you all right there. Bow. Now, I got to take this out because we got in a little chat. <sighs> Mr. Mister Billy Baker, come, come, come have a seat. Come have a seat. See, like I'm talking to all the Bakers today. This scene infuriates me because while I do understand that Billy is projecting, y'all do got to understand that. 
He's projecting because Billy sat with this girl at a dinner and didn't get any sense of anything. It was Laura who said, I think our daughter is back on drugs. Billy is the one that want to be like, no, 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 my daughter's perfect. No, not my daughter. Uh-uh. Nope, nope, no, nope. she good. She good. So she can say anything. And she didn't lie to him when she said she wasn't. Because she's not. She's on alcohol. So uh, <laughs> this is him projecting that self-guilt and everything onto Spencer. Because he's angry. And I get it that you look at Spencer as a son. Hell, you treat him better than your kids, to be honest. But... The yelling part is what's getting me. I understand you mad, but Spencer has been the only one, the only one that has been looking out for Liv the entire three seasons. When he first met her and she told him about his addiction, he said, how are you doing? Or are you okay type of thing? The only one, even when she told them, the only one that ever asked me how I was doing was Spencer. Not my twin, who I shared a womb with. Not the mother who pushed me out the womb or got me cut out the womb, whatever. And not the father either. Y'all showed up to one meeting, <laughs> one meeting, and that seemed like that was it. Oh, my daughter's back fine. Then she almost gets shot. Spencer takes a bullet for her, and the girl been suffering through PTSD. Chair moves, she jumping and dodging. Chris touch her arm, she doing all that. She's clearly suffering from PTSD and trauma, and y'all never once put this girl in therapy. Never once put this girl in therapy at all. At all. Didn't even try to. Oh, she got a podcast. Uh, she's good to go now. My daughter's fine. Like, that, that fell on both of y'all, Laura and Billy. Even her brother, after he said, yo, when I found you on the floor, I tried to repress the memory type thing, and that was, like, the worst thing ever. I thought he was going to be more like, yo, this is my sister, but he haven't even been there. He too much up Simone's butt to even notice his sister is struggling. And, again, when everybody was doing their own little thing, going their own separate ways, it was Spencer James who walked back in that house and stayed with her and, you know, kept her, I guess, sane-ish during the summer. Spencer did all that. Spencer has always been the one looking out for Liv. No one else. Everybody else is still in the future. Liv was the only one in the present. And this is why this scene gets me pissed off. This is why. Like, I know Spencer's not going to say anything to him. You can even look at the look. Look at the look. Look at the look. This hurting Spencer too. Like, bro, he did the best that he can. As soon as he found out, he gave her time to express it and confess. And then he told you against her will. He told y'all in a family setting so everyone knows. But you yelling at him because he didn't come to you first. The man just, they just got in a car wreck and he got to juggle all that. He got to juggle all that, his feelings, the right thing to do, football, all this type of stress, and you over here trying to add to it by getting in this neck. Billy, you are, I ain't even seen the episode, and I'm, talk, I'm already tossing you on the uh, disrespectful list. You ought to be slapped in that old smooth shine head. Somebody just should, because <laughs> you failed as a parent. I'm sorry to say it, but you have been failing as a parent. You treat Spencer more as your son, going up. You showed up to his king's speech. My guy, you was at his king's speech. Where was your daughter at? Drinking and driving. Your son. And we gonna get to that at the end, but your son sat in your office. You know he had a, a mild concussion. You listened to your friend tell you. I mean, y'all told him about the whole nausea thing and his friend almost dying. And you haven't checked up on your son once. To see, yo, let me let me just make sure he really good. The man been running upstairs, throwing up and stuff. Man, let's move past this for I stay on this segment for like 40 minutes. Cause this dude, this dude, I can't wait to hear y'all thoughts. Cause Billy tripping. He tripping on this one. You covered for her. My car's gone. Olivia's missing. She was in trouble and I didn't see it. She could be anywhere right now. The only choice is Hold on now. Layla, 
Layla, just on that right there, that one little few seconds, you already on my good list. You are on my good list. I know last episode you got sent to the shadow realm. You sitting in the sunken place, but I'm going to have to come and wrench on up in there and pull you out because, girl, th that's what I'm talking about. Because when Liv was reading her, she was saying truths. It wasn't lies. She was saying truth, and you can tell Layla's face. She felt it like, yo, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. So for her not talking to Liv to know that, yo, Liv is in trouble. She was there for me when I was at my lowest <laughs> and there for me before that and continued to be there for me. And I didn't even recognize how bad it was initially. And then now to know that she's been around you this whole time and been struggling again. She like, yo, I'm going to step up this time. I'm going to step up this time. She could be hurting. We need to find her. I give the utmost respect to Layla for that because people in real life can't do that. People in real life can't do that. They can be beefing and then a certain situation happen and they won't even like be there for their brother or sister or whomever because of some argument or some disagreement. Like, no, take your butt over there and fix it. So I love that right there, man. Shout out for the writers for that one. Y'all did it right this time. Let's keep going. Look at this. Hold on now. I don't know if this is like we got FaceTime, FaceTime, phone call, FaceTime, phone call. Uh, I don't know if this is like outbound calls that look like an eye fruit. So <laughs> I don't know. But <laughs> uh, obviously, he's been trying to get a hold of, of Liv. And this could be either before he told uh, everyone that, you know, she's she been drinking or after when she took the car from Jordan and it's in my head. Y'all know she liked to, I told y'all, Liv, boy, she got, she put on them track shoes, them Sonic shoes, and she, she takes off. That's her MO. So I know this is killing Spencer because he wants to find her, you know, in Operation Save Liv. Right now, I don't care about football. <clears throat> Billy probably gonna piss me off this episode. He probably going to piss me off, and I understand it that he's feeling it. He should feel it. He should feel it. But, sir, sir, your daughter almost your daughter almost killed herself before season one. Y'all put her in rehab or whatever, came back out. You didn't quit football, sir. You didn't quit football. Huh? Your daughter almost got shot. You didn't quit football. Jordan start acting ignorant, doing all this dumb stuff. <clears throat> Your marriage on the rocks. I know you you kind of like quit football then. Then when you was trying to run away. But it wasn't to save your kids. It wasn't to save your kids. So I'm trying to understand now. You like, uh, I don't really care about football. You shouldn't have cared back then, my guy. You shouldn't have cared back then. Yes, I got all the time for you today. I got all the time for you today. You shouldn't have cared back then. That's what's pissing me off. That is what's pissing me off because this dude, this dude, and while I big you up, I big you up. But when you act ignorant, I'm coming for your neck. I'm coming for your neck. Your daughter has been going through it the entire, before season one, before we even got it, she's been going through it. She told y'all, y'all live in the future. I live in the present. I'm the only one here. Y'all just think I'm okay and all this stuff. Y'all show up to one funky little meeting, and that's it. That's it. Now Liv is magically fixed. I'm still... She got shot as she was the target, not Spencer. She was the target. It was to get to Spencer and Flip and everybody else, but she was the intended target. Spencer took that bullet. And you stayed at the hospital for Spencer. I get that for Spencer again. And your team, you know, stood up for you with that Mosey character. But after that, where was the counseling for your doctor? Did you say, hey, you know what? We got an assistant coach. He can take it from here. I got a daughter that needs my help. Did you do that? Did you say, I don't care about football no more. Did you say that? Hmm. So I recall you didn't. 
That's why you. I'm a. Oh, I can't wait to episode nine. I can't wait, but I'm gonna keep going because I don't want to make the video an hour. Because I can stay on Billy all day. Bruh. I feel like this is all my fault. You carry an unbearable weight of responsibility. Like I said. I taught you. <clears throat> like I said, this man is stressing. This man is stressing. Let's go like back. Look at it. You know you stressing when you ain't even sitting down. You walking around pacing and stuff. He is stressing. <clears throat> He's probably this is probably after he told about the live situation. Now you're like, bro. Now she gone. Now you're like, it's all my fault. I should have just let her come out when she was ready. You know how we do. We want to take all the blame and place it on us. Like, no, Liv made the choice to run, Spencer. It's not your fault, but I get it. I get it. And it's, and it's, uh, it's Dr. Spirits is trying to get him right. You carry an unbearable weight of responsibility. I taught you to equate love with sacrifice. That man giving y'all the Denzel one tier. The Denzel one tier. This man, this is probably, that one tier is probably when they first had the initial conversation. Him and uh, Liv, and he told her, uh, is either you going to tell him or I'm going to tell him. Because they're probably breaking his heart. But I like how they placed it right here, though. Because you hear Grace talking like, you can't carry the, the weight of the world yourself. You trying to heal everybody else, but you are dying. A uh, smart woman, a very smart woman, told me, like, if my cup is empty, how can I fill your cup? She said it more better than that. But y'all get the drift? Like, if I have nothing in my cup to give, then what? what is it? Like, you can't get nothing from nothing. Like, you can't get nothing and have nothing and make something. Like, you need something. And if my cup is empty, I can't fill your cup up. And Spencer is working with an empty cup, but still trying to fill everybody else's cup. And it's killing him. But Grace is right. But I need you to start putting yourself first. He needs to put himself first. And that's one of the hardest things to do for an individual. <clears throat> I relate to Spencer a lot, a lot. I went through a lot of things that he went through personally. So I understand how it is what we want to take on everything ourselves. We don't want to ask for help. We uh, <laughs> we feel like we Superman. We can heal all the world. But I had someone smart ask me one time, well, who's there for you? Who's the ear for you? Who's helping you heal? And I'm like, dang, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So that's Spencer. He's trying to carry everything and juggle everything. And, they, and his mama like, well, who's helping you? You got to help yourself. That's a message right there. For all those people that do that out there, you have to help yourself. Protect your peace. Protect your peace. Get your mental wellness in check and help yourself. Build yourself up so that you're able to attribute to someone or you're able to help with someone else. Because until then, you're just going to burn yourself out. Until you have no more. So, little message there. I know I got a little deep. Got a little deep. A little message there. <clears throat> I don't want to leave things unsaid. What's going on? We never know when we'll get a chance to say them again. Bruh. Let's just pull up the frame. And then here we go. They're going to end us off with the Jordan stuff. We know Jordan been taking the nausea medicine and all that good stuff. The bypass, the concussion stuff, and it finally caught up to him. Just like uh, Billy's teammate when he said he thought he was dead on the field. Same thing. They got the man looking pasty. Looking pasty. And we know anything when it comes to the brain is very complicated. You, your body can be 100% healed, but if the brain don't want to get you up, it don't want to get you up. So we don't, I don't know what they're going to do with Jordan here. But I know this is crazy. So you got your daughter who's not even in the scene who talking about I don't want to leave things unsaid. She don't even know her brother is in the hospital, her twin. And you know she's the one that's actually there for people. So she don't even know her brother's in the hospital. Billy don't. They probably don't know where their daughter is. So he got all. they got all that. <laughs> they got all that to juggle. And then, bruh, I'm just thinking about it. Because we got, we got Simone here. Simone is his wife. We might, <laughs> we might get the wife revealed here. 
Yo, because I know them doctors probably going to ask, like, who's the next of kin or who's the spouse or whatever. And so, <laughs> someone's going to be like, that's me. Yo, this might end up being the craziest episode. This might be the craziest episode. Because <laughs> if they got to deal with their son being unconscious, their daughter a runaway, and we found out that she's been drinking all summer, and you know she has an addictive uh, personality. And then you find out <laughs> your son forged a signature and he's married. He's married to the woman right there standing a few feet from you. And you can't reach around and snatch her because your son is down there. And they forged your name. The DA. <laughs> they forged your name on the certificate to get married. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is going to be crazy. This is going to be crazy. This trailer, boy, it has so much in it, man. Hold on, y'all. All right, so. <sighs> um, That had a whole lot, man. That had a whole lot, and I don't. I can't wait for the episode. Again, let me see how long I've been recording. Ooh, I've been recording for a lot. I didn't even know I talked this much, but that is that, that is episode nine. It's called Trust. That's the Feel the Pain trailer, and it was a whole lot into it. I don't want to keep talking. I already didn't talk long enough. Um, hop in the comments below. Let's get these conversations going, because it's... I know y'all got a lot to say. Hell, I had a lot to say. And uh, again, if you appreciate the channel, you appreciate the videos, go ahead and run the thumbs up as it helps the channel. If you are new here and you want to become part of the Dream Squad, that is the best squad on the net. Uh, as we are on our way to that 5K, less than 100 away, then show your boy some love by hitting that sub, click the noti bell, and hit all, and share like you care. And I'll see y'all in the comments below and in the next video. All right? We out. Peace. You just come running by.